Hello and welcome to another live Wednesday 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Welcome everybody. How long has it been? Has it been four weeks, five weeks? Sometimes I think we're, we're forgetting to count. It has been a long time. How is everybody coping? It's not easy, but it can get done. That is actually the purpose of my Facebook lives every week that I want to provide some insights for the people who are working from home. I've been working from home for the past 15 years, so I'm quite used to working from home. A lot of freelance people, translator, graphic designer, they work already from home and for them it's fairly easy to work from home in that lockdown but we have other people for them it's really new i hear from many people who say oh my god when is this over when can we go back to the new like the the normal routine of just going to an office being with friends enjoying that that social interaction well it's not easy, but as, as I say, together we can do this. Today, I would like to take a minute and talk about the book from Brene Brown. It's Rising Strong. It's the reckoning, the rumble and the revolution. It might be something different to look at. And she talks about the gifts of imperfection and there are 10 guideposts for wholehearted living. I think it's important that we take out the, the things that are working for us, that are important for us. And I felt there were three points that I would like to emphasize today. Cultivating authenticity. What does that mean? Actually, it means that we want to let go of what people think, of what other people think. Especially in those difficult times, we have to get through it. We have to be happy, healthy, sane to get through this. So we don't need to have criticism of people. I take it, this is kind of like my interpretation of uh, how I would let go of what people think. If you feel like you want to start with a new project, you have always wanted to let's say play the piano as i heard from a friend of mine she even takes like virtual lessons now now is the time don't listen to what other people say and we all know there is never a good time there is never a bad time when people sometimes ask me when is a good time to start my own business well there is never a good time there is never a good time but maybe now is the time so don't really listen what other people say. It is important that you are listening to your inner voice. What does your voice tell you? Go ahead, do it now. Now is the time. Be authentic and be genuine and honest with yourself. Now is the time. And also now is the time to dream big. Why not? Don't listen to what other people think or even say. Sometimes when people give you critiques or provide critiques, even if you don't ask for it, what is the best thing to do? Just say thank you. Thank you. That's all it needs. Okay, thank you. And you move on. Whatever feels right for you is right at the moment. The other part is the self-compassion what can that be the self-compassion is letting go of perfectionism aren't we all perfectionists everything should look perfect i come from switzerland where we think like everything has to be perfect in order that it is good i moving to the us i think i've learned that i'm also comfortable with what if it's only 80%? It's not 100% that I am okay with it. So let go of perfectionism. What if you're a leader in your industry and you don't have all the information? 
and you still have to make a decision. Now is the time where you have to be comfortable being a little uncomfortable. I like that saying, be comfortable being uncomfortable. So it's that self-compassion, being authentic, genuine, self-compassionate with yourself. We can make a mistake. I just made a mistake with my podcast. I said like the lady is from Antarctica, but now she says, no, she's in the Arctic. Minor, minor detail, but I try to correct it. So if you listen to the podcast, the lady is in the north, in the Arctic, and she's surrounded by polar bears. So listen to the podcast, how she's working from home. How must that be when you are working in the Arctic, in the meteo station? Certainly an interesting venture for that. So let go of perfectionism. We're allowed to make mistakes. We're allowed to make one mistake. That's what I always say. So let go of the perfectionism. It's not the end of the world. The other insight that she says, cultivating, let go, cultivating creativity actually. So cultivate your creativity. And we hear a lot of people say like, I am not creative. I would argue everybody is creative. Meanwhile, we might not be a Picasso or not a Lady Gaga, but the people that I see here watching, all of you are writing emails. You're writers. Everybody's writing emails or texts, correct? So we're all creative. It's not that everybody likes to write those emails, but that's today the communication, the written communication that we are doing. So don't underestimate that you are creative. You can create something. So let go of comparison. Yes, I'm not Hemingway or Shakespeare, but still I've written my book, Take It From The Iron Woman. It's a story about myself. What do people think? I don't know. I wrote it for the people who are interested in sports and in business and to empower the people that they can do whatever they want. I certainly have learned that if I feel like my projects are what I want to do, that's the right thing to do. So it is about the authenticity, it's a difficult word, authenticity, let go of what people think, the self-compassion, let go of perfectionism, and the creativity, cultivate the creativity, invite the creativity into your world. Let go of comparison. What else is happening in your world while working from home, coping with the situation that we're in at the moment? This morning I was on a call with people from Australia, Thailand, the UK, Belgium, Spain, the US. It was interesting to see all those people supporting each other. How many Zoom calls have you had? How many maybe new connections have you made? I certainly have taken advantage of connecting with other people. And actually on Friday, there is a conference, an online conference called Fearless, and I will giving a talk. And while we were preparing on that platform, I met interesting people. So what I was thinking before, I would have never had the opportunity to meet so many different people, and especially also people from around the world. Isn't there something good also coming out of this? Connect with others. Take advantage of connecting with others. But also, who can you reach out on a weekly basis or even daily basis? Check in with somebody who needs to hear an uplifting story, who needs to just listen to your voice. My aunt this week says, thank you for calling. She's not doing so good. She was coughing. And I said, I don't want to keep you too long if it's hard for you to breathe. But she was very happy 
to hear a different voice. So don't underestimate what changes you can make if you are talking to somebody else. And I know from Trina that she said uh, at our initial calls that she is calling the clients. Even clients are at home now. Clients are, they don't know what to do, right? So if you have a good relationship with your clients, why don't you call them up? They like to hear from you. What about checking in with your friends when they are supposed to train for an event? Some people are not able to go outside. So maybe just checking in, how is everything, how is everything going, even with a text might be a good thing to do. And I'm gonna repeat myself, the routine is actually what's keeping you sane. So if you have not established a good routine, now after four or five weeks working from home, it's really, really important to create that routine. And you don't have to follow my routine, but make sure that you are creating a routine that is working for you. The routine can be getting up, making your bed, dressing up, dress, put on the lipstick, start to work, reach out to others. And for leaders that I have on the call here, it is important to have like a check-in with your team. How is everybody doing? It's not so much about the results. It's about just talking to the people and asking how is the family? How is everybody doing? We know that people who have kids, it's especially difficult. I know from a friend of mine, she took a leave of absence. She has three kids three kids to homeschool. So it's especially hard. What if you have three kids, you have to take care of them and you have a stressful job. It's not possible. We are super women, super moms, but you can only do so much. So it is important to realize that you have to put the oxygen first on yourself to be happy, healthy and sane, and then you can help other people. What else is important? If you can go outside, maybe buy some flowers or pick some flowers, that gives the good energy in your house. You look at your flowers and be grateful that you have some positive energy in your house. And I was wondering, talking about the routine, how is the routine going for the weekend? Have you changed something? Do you check your work email? Are you working? I hope not. Because what I said in one of the other Facebook lives is create a space for you, close that computer, put your work aside as if you are closing your door from the office or the cube or wherever you used to be sitting. So it is important to cut off that time and just say enough. You don't have to work 24 seven. It is important to set those boundaries. And what I also heard from others, a question that came later, how do we deal with people intruding into your workspace, friends, families, if you live in a big house? One person said, oh my God, I'm looking forward to my own space again. He's helping out his family. So he's used to, he said, cleaning up him after himself in the kitchen and now he has to deal with three or four other people. A new situation. He has to adapt it. How can he create some quiet moments? How can he create some space for himself? Well, I think what I would recommend is, if you have your own room, that you are just telling the people, I need an hour to myself. What do you do in that hour? Well, meditation would be nice. You have to start with maybe five minutes, 10 minutes, but enjoy that quiet time or listen to music, play an instrument, read a book. What I've seen that has been working well for me 
when I set goals for the week and this week for some reason on Monday I felt like goals don't work for me this week so I changed the word to intentions so this week I intend to read a little more because last week I said I want to read one hour every day and did, this does not did not happen so far so I was like oh, I didn't reach my goal so then I said I'm intending to read as much as I can so I read before I go to bed I try to read 15 minutes half an hour and I think it also depends how good the book is maybe I didn't have the right book if you have a book that is like a page turner obviously that is more inviting and inviting for you to spend more time with the book so maybe I haven't found the right book I'm wondering if you have a good book recommendation for me a page turner that would be good so then my intentions were my goals for this week and in January I took a writing class and there we learned haiku and haifun this is a way of writing poems so I wrote a poem yesterday something that I've never done before maybe that triggered my shift from goal to intention be more mindful with myself and what did I say this early be have more self-compassion let go of perfection let go of my goals and then also invite the creativity so I'm preaching to my audience here meanwhile I am so hard on myself so make sure that you are not so hard on yourself be okay with what you can do obviously when you work on a project on a deadline that's a little different but if you set goals or intentions for yourself pay attention be mindful but what I've also seen is that a person put all the tasks on their list and playing an instrument came dead last so I asked why does the playing the instrument come dead last shouldn't that be on top of your list rather than at the very bottom this goes to show that we typically take advantage or take care of the others first and then we do the things that we would love to do so why not change the things that you love that they are on top of your list and I also want to invite you write your intentions or your goals or your dreams down research has shown that you create a new neural pathway when you write it down and how I interpret that is when you write it down you see it you can say yeah I have it in my head I'm fine I know I know what I have to do well then have you reached your goals have you done it I will get to this these are the excuses we find so if you write it down you have it on a piece of paper and you see it and one more thing make sure you look at it every single day so what are your intentions for today, today or this week? And it's only Wednesday, so you can even change something or modify something. Maybe read a little more. Spend less time on social media. Spend less time watching TV. We know the enemies while working from home are three things, I think, or maybe even more. The refrigerator yes we can go and pick up some goodies there but we shouldn't do that every single five ten minutes right the tv turn off the tv and social media read uplifting listen to uplifting insights and do something meaningful learn something change something and again it's very easy to say that while we have busy jobs and busy lives ahead of you and we need to cope with like the social distancing and also the maybe not so easy way of shopping take advantage of having a delivery why not 
Okay, so I want to finish and reiterate the three points I made for today. So cultivating your authenticity, let go of what other people think or even say. Cultivate self-compassion, let go of the perfectionism that we have and show. And then invite more creativity, whatever creativity means to you. Let go of comparison. You're good enough. You're beautiful. You're good enough. Are there any questions that I can answer? And I will keep on our uh, Facebook Live. So again, I have a podcast coming out on Monday. I have a podcast coming out every Wednesday with more tips from working from home. And today actually with Joanna from the Arctic in the north. And Friday is the blog. And whoever wants to just talk to me, I'm offering 30 minutes free coaching. And don't be afraid. It's not counseling. It's not therapy. We're just checking in how you're doing. And I'm happy to answer all those questions. And if you want to join my Facebook group, it's called Work at Home. There you can find other insights, pictures, pictures of how people work from home, how easy it is or how difficult it is. But we all want to support each other and we want to get through those difficult times. So be safe, stay home, save lives, but also stay sane. Thank you very much and have a wonderful rest of the week and more so a wonderful Wednesday. Thank you, everybody.